Chickens, pigs, and cows, and goats. We've got plenty more farmed animals, big and small. All for love and love for all. Welcome to Eve's Barnside Chat. We take your questions from the magic rainbow bag. Love lives here, so join us today. Or visit our store and check out our website to learn more. Welcome to Eve's Barnside Chat. We take your questions from the magic rainbow bag. Love lives here, so join us today. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Heath's Barnside Chat. I remembered to unmute the microphone. Hallelujah. Uh, we hope you're having a wonderful day wherever in the world you're tuning in from. My partner in crime, Steve, was going to join us, but Esther is looking like she is causing a commotion in the house, so hopefully he'll be able to join us soon. Let us know in the comment feed where you're tuning in from. We are, of course, coming from Happily Ever Esther Farm Sanctuary, located in Campbellville, Ontario, Canada. My gosh, okay, the comment feed is lighting up here for me. Hello, Susan. Hello, Suma from Vermont. And Tina, and hello... Oh gosh, there are so many scratches on my screen cover. And, and it is sunny out. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's warmer. Uh, it's, it is very warm today, actually. I'm a bit overdressed. Um, but the nights are really cool. The heavy frosts are setting in. And it looks like there is a bug about to climb across the camera. Oh, no, he chose a different direction. We are... Um, we are going to take some questions from the question bag. I have Steve's rainbow bag here and uh, loaded up with all the questions. And there are a lot of questions in the bag for this week. If you have a question that you'd like to get answered, um, if, you, if it's more of a private question or if you want to remain private about it, you can private message or email us and we will put it in the bag anonymously so you don't have to ask it here on the question board. Or you can just simply ask the question below in the question, uh, down, down below in the comment field and one of our kind admins who help keep this space a safe space, they will take the questions out of, the, uh, out of this feed and they will email it to us. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of questions here. Let's see. Question. Question number one. Oh, here's Kevin trying to walk by being all quiet. Here he is, folks. Kevin, Kevin from Facilities Maintenance Team. Here he is. <laughs> he doesn't want to be a part of it. He's out of here. Uh, questions from the question bag. Let's see. Question number one. I always say I'm going to screen them, but instead I just cut them all up and I don't screen them. So hopefully we don't get any questions that popped out like last week. Uh, this is a question from Kathy. And Kathy wants to know, does Captain Dan ever visit Bobby Girl since they came to Heaps together? Would it be safe for them to have visits away from the others, of course, uh, Kathy? So good question, Kathy. Actually, the reason uh, 
um, that we started separating them originally um, was due to aggression from Captain Dan. Uh, years ago, Captain Dan had a couple of uh, aggression problems. That's when he fought with um, Len quite extensively. And he also, <coughs> excuse me, he also um, picked on Bobby Girl a couple of times. And um, Bobby Girl had shoulders full of lacerations from Dan. And so actually they were getting separated due to the aggression issues that were happening. Um, so I don't think that would be a smart move. Um, but we do contemplate a lot of different things and scenarios, but I don't think that adding Captain Dan in. Also because Bobby Girl is, uh, Bobby Girl's not spayed, um, so Captain Dan um, may try to mount her, and that's of course something that we can't have. So, good question, Kathy. Hey, Nana. Oh yeah, the times have changed. The clock has changed. It's we have fallen back one hour, and they tell us that we've gained an hour of sleep. However, I'm not so sure. Okay, next question. Uh, this is from Dolores, and Dolores asks, How long will the quarantine area need to be unused after Angelo moves? Great question, Dolores. So, um, if we were to just take it by the textbook, it would be eight months that that pasture would need to rest. However, if we were to talk about risk management and how the caregiver team managed uh, Angelo's pus and stuff that was coming out, um, I would have to say that they managed it really well and that no pus got on uh, his pasture. But there is a small chance always that some did get out there on his pasture. But uh, it did go managed really well. So we are going to keep that space available just for Angelo for the time being. And then hopefully, uh, hopefully come, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, we will, we will manage risk for sure. I mean, if we had to move somebody, we would, uh, you know, if we had push come to shove, I would have to go with the caregivers and say that the disease is not on that paddock and although Angelo did live on that paddock that it's not on that paddock so anyways it's it's a very that's a great question Dolores um, thanks for asking all right let's see okay another question oh yeah hey Kathy yeah, yeah Captain Dan definitely was the aggressor towards Bobby girl and that you know they were they were, um, that's at the point too when Dan was trying to become uh, the, the lead and took over Len. And so there was a lot of aggression issues during that time. Uh, Louise wants to know when will Sammy and the piglets be integrated? I don't know. Uh, springtime, probably 22. Uh, that's probably the safest bet. Good question. Um. And we won't integrate right now. Furthermore to that, we won't integrate integrate pigs around because there's a chance that they could get forced to sleep outside. And in the springtime and the summer, that's fine. They can sleep outside in the spring and the summer. But in the you know in the fall and the winter time, they need a roof over their head and they need walls around them. So um, them getting kicked out of their space or bullied out of their space is something that we're not uh, going to be managing that. So we always do our integrations before fall and make sure that everybody is comfortable coming in and sleeping and going to bed. Uh, question from Lisa. Does Esther get excited when you get home after being gone? Uh, yeah, she does. She chats us up. She doesn't get up and run around. Phil definitely does. Um, but uh, yeah, she chats us up for sure. All right, let's see. So we've got the the barn, the cow barn, is still about 50% framed up. There has not been much forward motion on that. Uh, we had uh, the carpenter that was building that, unfortunately moved last minute and uh, moved very far away. And 
so we were left trying to find another carpenter to finish the job. Um, I'm sure Kevin will let you know on facilities maintenance that we did find another carpenter to uh, finish the barns. They will be starting end of November. So that is where we are on that. Not ideal, but you know, that's what we roll with. We just roll with it. We have all the materials here on site. And uh, so we will be framing, finishing framing those barns up end of November. It's fall, fall is in full swing here. The pigs have turned over their entire paddock to mud, well, most of it anyway. And uh, it won't be till springtime until you'll start to see green shoots coming up in various areas. The high traffic areas, of course, where nothing grows. And next year, right here in this space, you can see there's a bunch of water collecting there in the middle. Uh, we're going to dig it out and put a proper bog there. At least that's what we would like to do. And it'll help channel some of the water that comes off of these spaces where all of the grass is gone. Yeah. And as the new pig spaces get added, so there's a new forest space um, and a new hallway system that's being added to get the pigs over to the forest. As those spaces are added, um, there'll be a lot less uh, foot traffic on the areas that they're using right now because they'll have more space. So those areas will become less used and uh, they'll be able to relax a little bit and we'll do some plantings and stuff like that that we need to do. Oh, this, this lady, Bob oh girl. Gosh, it's so good to see you outside. It's so good to see you outside. Yes. Oh my goodness, you're so pretty. Bobby girl, yes, you got a chance to get out. Huh? The caregiver. Oh my, huh? oh my goodness. It's so beautiful out today. The caregiver is so pretty. A way to get her out. It's such a beautiful day. Oh my goodness, you're so special. You know how special you are? There we are. So you can now see Bobby Girl just over the left of my shoulder here. She's out and about. Um, they installed some gates that can get her from the barn all the way across to this mulch pasture. And then there are some grass hallways that she's able to visit. And uh, so uh, it's great to see Bobby Girl out. I was not expecting to see her out today. Maybe we can get a little closer. Let me try. Let me get a little closer. Hopefully the internet, well, yeah, the internet should stay. Bobby girl. Bobby girl. Bobby girl. Bobby. Why do you, why would you do it? Hey, why would you do it? So good, so good. It's nice to have Bobby here in the background for the question period. Oh, she's going back to her Bobby girl things. Okay, another question. Uh, when will Sammy and the piglets be integrated into the next herd? Oh, a repeat question. Uh, are you concerned that Sammy might challenge Captain Dan since Dan is getting older? Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm concerned that he's going to challenge him because he's definitely going to challenge him. Um, and all integrations come with a great amount of concern because change is imminent and the list of the list of healthcare needs usually increases as we are integrating. So, uh, you know, from abrasions, cuts, stuff like that. Okay, so good question. And that was from Lisa Ellen.
Ian Potter, when does holiday magic start? Oh, that's a great question. I wasn't going to get into it right this moment, but since you asked, holiday magic starts end of this week. And we have been asking the residents what their holiday wish is. In their letters to Santa, very soon. Um, and I have to let you out in on a little tidbit to get you excited about holiday magic because the holidays are an exciting time of year around here. It's where we get to review what we did last year or this year that we're working on. We do a big review and, and then we also get to dream a little bit about what we imagine the next year being. And uh, there's a lot of needs this year and we definitely need a lot of support. Um, the, the goal has increased this year, um, and the needs have increased this year. Oh, Mr. Moose is out at the front of the barn. Mr. Moose! I didn't see that he was out. Uh, so the needs have increased, the, uh, the, the goal has increased, and we've got lots of fun things to share with you about uh, how we're going to reach this goal together how we're going to do it in incremental small changes. Every week we will gather and we will add the um, the fireside chat will be added on Thursdays and as well as we'll be... Oh, he is coming over here, Mr. Moose. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, what are you doing? You're just out. Just out. Uh, it's such a beautiful day today. It's so nice to see him out. Um, so for the holiday magic, we have a lot of fun activities planned this year. Um, the I can't wait to share it all with you, um, but I, I will share this one bit with you. I'm going to share my screen. There's something that I'm working on right now, and I'm working out the logistics of how we're going to be able to do this as a group, but here's the gist of it. We're going to play Cow Pie Bingo. And it may be an event that you have heard about, uh, maybe at a fall fair. It's not something that I've come up with, but we are adapting Cow Pie Bingo uh, for Happily Ever Esther Farm Sanctuary's Holiday Magic Fundraiser. And we are definitely going to play Cow Pie Bingo. That is going to be one of the events uh, that I am going to be marking down on my calendar and following every single day until we get there. Cow Pie Bingo, cannot wait to play it with you. It is going to be a real blast. There are gonna be some amazing prizes that you can win with Cow Pie Bingo and all the while raising money for happy. All right, enough on the Cow Pie Bingo. I know that you're excited to play Cow Pie Bingo because who would not be excited to play Cow Pie Bingo? Oh my gosh. Mr. Moose, come here. Come here and see me. Come here and see me. Hello, Mr. Moose. Hello. Oh, hello. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. I gotta be the camera person. Hey. Oh, it's so good. It's so good to see you. All right, let's take another question from the question bag with Mr. Moose here. Um, Barbara wants to know, I love the videos where Corno is lovingly body slamming Dad Steve to get attention and hugs. Did this start before Corno moved into the house or before? Um, I'm sure, well, it didn't happen in the barn, um, but the courtship started to happen definitely once he moved in, and that is... Uh, you know, a full display of his feathers and drumming. If 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 we had a if we had a really good microphone up against Cornelius's um, breast, you could hear what sounds like a tenor snare drum drumming. And uh, it's when he fills his air sacs up and he's strutting around. Whoa! The wind is strong today. Uh, it's when he fills his air sacs up and he's strutting around 
and uh, he makes this noise and it's to attract a mate and he does it with people he likes so if you sit on the floor with him when he's feeling good um, he'll come and he'll drum and he'll blow himself up and uh, yeah good question if you have a question remember you we can take the questions down below in the comment feed um, put it down in the question uh, down below and if it's appropriate we will add it to the bag if it's inappropriate We'll just skip over it. Um, what nocturnal wildlife do you have at Heaths? So we definitely have rabbits. Uh, we have raccoons. We have uh, coyotes, um, porcupines, possums. I'm sure there are others, but that's what comes off the top of my head. Good question. Uh, any hints for the holiday magic fundraiser this year? Looking forward to it, Minnie. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Minnie. Uh, we're looking forward to it, too. We do have lots of exciting things like cow pie bingo. Oh, my gosh. And there is um, going to be... What else can I tell you about? There's the resident secret Santa letters, which um, this year... Now I can't tell you anything. I can't, I can't, I cannot expose the holiday magic secrets just yet, but it is coming and uh, we'll do a special live feed this Friday. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is, but we will do a special live feed announcing everything that is holiday magic and of course bringing back the fireside chats. Uh, Tina wants to know, is there a limit to the number of residents that you can take care of at one time? Well, yes, there definitely is a limit. Do I know what that limit is? Well, I'd have to, uh, you know, every week we discuss with the caregiver team about how everybody's time management is doing. I'm just going to turn a little bit here so that the sun is not so much in my face. Um, it's all about time management and how our aging residents are doing and uh, about any acute care you know, residents that were, that were dealing with acute care and residents that are on palliative care. Um, so, yeah, there is a limit to the number of residents, and it's, of course, directly related to how many, how much funds are available and the plan of how much we want to grow or if we, you know, how, how much we want to maintain um, and, of course, how much we can fundraise. Those are all things that limit us into how many residents that we can take care of at one time. Um, the way that we have structured it thus far is that we have to make sure that the maintenance personnel and that the health care givers, uh, that, the, that the caregivers, um, we have to make sure that they can do all of what has to be done in a day without our volunteers and that's where we have to make sure that we always remain um, and we love our volunteers and everything that they bring to the farm and we love the programs that we're able to here to offer to maintain um, the volunteer presence with the residents um, but ultimately our contingency planning needs to be able to operate the farm on a bare bone structure with just maintenance and healthcare staff, should we have a pandemic situation uh, that's related to the farm or not? Um, but we always must make sure that we can do it on our own because if we get too much, or if we have too many residents to care for and not enough staff uh, or not enough programs to support them, well, you know that that spells a disaster. So I think I went off on a big tangent. Steve would be going, wow, well, you've gone off on a big tangent. Friends, what else do we have to talk about this week? Oh yeah, people were asking about the bench that got carved by the, uh, by the arborists that were here doing a bunch of tree trimming around. So they made this lovely bench and surprised us. And you can see this bench by the fire. A project that's coming to fruition that I just cannot be more excited about right now and that is let me bring it up here we go um, so we have every year 
for Holiday Magic Fundraiser. We raise a little bit of funds that goes to securities and fire suppression and fire detection equipment. And the project um, this year is getting started finally. It's gone through lots of planning and uh, we have finally decided on where all of the cameras are going to go in the barn and all of the appropriate smoke detection equipment that is commercialized and appropriate for the barn. Um, there is so much ex there, there is so much about this that is, uh, excites me. There are cameras that are going across the property, on the exterior, in the interior, and there are these cameras called hike vision, hike vision cameras, and they are a color and thermal camera. And what they will allow us to do, what they will do, the primary function of these cameras is, of course, security, but they also have another primary function, and, and that is to detect fire. These cameras, if I were to hold up a lighter in my hand right now and the cameras were all installed and I was to light it, um, the cameras would notify me that there is fire and that there is uh, and where it is and if I need to be alarmed about it. So... These cameras can actually detect a fever in the residents uh, or humans. We can set them to a certain temperature to alert us if something is too high or too low. They use these cameras in, um, on big, huge, tall forestry towers to detect forest fires. Um, they use these cameras at garbage dumps to detect fires and hot spots. Um, so these cameras are going to be across the property and inside and out and the fire detection um, like is just going to be amazing. I hope that we never have to detect a fire, um, but if we do, it will sound all of the alarms and all of the whistles and it will sound on all of our phones and it will make noise in the house and it will make noise in the staff room. And so these are some very exciting additions that Kevin and his facilities team will be sharing with you very soon. Uh, we've got some great stuff happening over at Instagram at Happily Ever Esther. You can find uh, there are what's exclusive about it is there's exclusive stories content. So if you have not yet gone over and are not an Instagram follower, we please ask you to head on over to Instagram and key in those digits and follow us. And of course, if you're not following us on Facebook, do us a favor and click the follow us button that uh, makes sure that your feed will be filled with all that is happily ever Esther day in and day out. Oh my gosh. Friends, we have covered a lot of details today. And uh, uh, we can't forget that it's Remembrance Day coming up. Um, so uh, please remember on Remembrance Day to take some time, uh, take a moment to take a moment to remember all of the animals' lives that were lost in um, in those wars. So uh, Remembrance Day coming up. That's why we've got the poppy on there. Um, I think I've covered everything today, friends. I'm, I'm kind of lost without Steve being here. We bang stuff back and forth and we joke. I, I don't have any stupid dad jokes for you today. It's all just me talking. You didn't get any Steve, but I'll make sure that he's here next week on the Barnside Chat. We hope you're having a wonderful day wherever in the world you're tuning in from. Oh, there's Bobby Girl. We will see you on Friday, this coming Friday, for a special episode of Barnside Chat. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. My name is Derek. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye for now. All we need is a place to be and a few good friends for some company. If you'd like to stay, you don't have to leave. We'll leave the lights on and the door unlocked. If you drop on by, you don't have to knock. We're happy to share whatever we've got.